and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our sermon text this morning, of course, is our reading from John as well as our reading from Acts. This is Good Shepherd Sunday. So we are reminded that He is our Good Shepherd, He is our Provider, He is the door to our protection. Yes. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we we just acknowledge your awesome presence among us again today. God, we thank you for indeed your grace and mercy. And even each of our lives, God, we thank you for how you have provided for us and how you provide for us on a daily basis. We thank you, God, that you're able to just acknowledge how you live and bless the honors of you. So God, I pray once again that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts would indeed be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength, and you are our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The Lord is risen. He is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. And it's Good Shepherd Sunday. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter, and on the fourth Sunday of Easter, each year we are confronted with texts that remind us of the power of God at work in our lives. As one who protects us, as one who provides for us, as one who makes a way for us, and one who is the way for us. And I'm reading from John chapter 10 today. Jesus speaks to the leaders of the religious community who are a little bit beside themselves because of what Jesus is doing. The religious community is struggling with Jesus being the person and doing the work that he came to do. And you know we still struggle with being the people that God calls us to be. We still struggle with following the example of our good shepherd who is both our shepherd and our door. It's interesting to me, and I'm sure it is for you, I would imagine, how we Christians struggle with living the message that we sing about, that we confess, that we read, and sometimes that we shout about. The good shepherd of our text today, Jesus has healed a man in chapter 9. The man was born blind. You remember this story. They were walking along, and they saw this man born blind. Blind from birth. If you are born a certain way, there is not a whole lot you can do about it. I was born with big ears, and there's not a whole lot that I can do about that. I was born with a dimple in my chin, and there's not a whole lot that I can do about that. I was born a whole lot lighter than I am today. <laughs> but I had dark ears, so you know what I'm talking about. I just want to There's some things that we're born with a dimple we can do about that. <laughs> These men, when they see this man who was born blind, ask the question, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? They were looking for somebody to blame. They were looking for a way to exclude this individual. They were looking for a way to label him in a bad way. They were not following what Jesus was teaching. You do know what we teach about dealing with other folk or talking about other people, right? The Good Shepherd, who is our shepherd and our door, teaches us to put the best construction on everything. That's, that's what we teach. When Jesus responds to their question, he says, he puts the best construction on it. He says, neither sin. It was happened this way so that the works of God might be displayed in his life. His situation in life was going to be used so that somebody might see God at work. When we see things in our life or even in other people's lives that we question, when we go through situations that we don't quite understand, rather than condemning ourselves or condemning somebody else, we just might ask God, God, what in the world are you doing in this situation? And then we might respond with the song writer who says, whatever you do, God, please don't do it without us. Jesus heals the man, and the religious leaders do what? You know what they do. 
they kicked him out or something. Now Jesus had healed them on the day that they didn't think he should have been healed. He had healed them, and he was on one of their outcasts, and they cast him out. They kick him out. They, they lay hands on him and put him out. Now Jesus has just demonstrated who he is, the good shepherd, the healer, the provider. And they put him out. The good shepherd, Jesus, has revealed himself as one who takes care of his own. Wherever he finds them and in whatever condition they may find themselves, the good shepherd watches out for his sheep. The good shepherd protects his sheep, and his sheep know him. So Jesus is reminding these religious leaders of what he came to do. And they just aren't getting it. They're not getting it because they're more concerned about doing things the way they've always done them. They, they're really concerned about losing some control. The same challenge is present in our reading from Acts. <laughs> In the reading from Acts, did you notice who is annoyed in the reading? Peter and John are, are speaking to the people, the, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees come to them. And the Sadducees, who don't believe in the resurrection, are ticked off. They are upset. They are fit to be tied. They're in a rage. They're feeling some kind of way because Peter and John are talking about the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And they don't believe in the resurrection. So they had him arrested. And the next day, Ananias and Cephas and John and other leaders in the church are asked them, asked Peter and John, by what power or by what name did you do what you did? They were concerned about somebody else influencing the people. That they were challenged by another authority making things happen among the people. 5,000 people had been added to the church. 5,000 people had joined the Christian campaign, become followers of the Good Shepherd, and they were people of influence. They would have 5,000 people. So this was an attempt to stop them. The Sadducees didn't appreciate what was going on. Their power was being challenged. Their influence was being challenged. When we come together, when we acknowledge that the Lord is our shepherd, he's our good shepherd, he's leading us, he's protecting us, he's empowering us, when the church of God recognizes who we are and the power that we have, then we become the powerful force that God has created us to be. And it's not about achieving power for the sake of power. It's not about creating kingdoms over here and kingdoms over there. It's about recognizing that Jesus, our good shepherd, loves the flock. And the flock is way beyond our understanding. The flock that Jesus is talking about, that he loves, crosses the denominational lines and boundaries. The flock crosses country borders. That flock that he laid down his life for, that flock is inclusive and it is far-reaching. And when we acknowledge who we are as God's people, we are powerful. I am so glad that we cannot place a limit on the depth and the height of God's love. He says there is one shepherd and one flock. It's that kind of love that the good shepherd calls us to have with and for one another. It is because we are loved that we can love that way. Because we are loved with a love that knows no limits. Because we are loved with a love that knows no respect of people. Because we are loved with a love that looks beyond our faults and sees our need. Then we can love without limitation and judgment. Because we are loved with a love that looks beyond our faults, we can look beyond the faults of our sisters and our brothers. Because the Lord is our good shepherd. Because he leads us beside steel waters, refreshing waters, not troubling waters. Because he walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Because he is the door that enables us to enter into the safety of God's love. We are protected from the evils 
and the challenges of this world. We're protected, but we can't always avoid. We can't avoid some of the challenges of life. We can't avoid some of the sicknesses of life. We can't escape some of the consequences of our own sinful lives. But we can be sure that God is our provider, our protector. He is the door of our protection. Do you have a place where you can go and get some peace? Is there somewhere you can go and close the door, if you will? And just meditate and kind of get things in perspective. In our bulletin today, there are some relaxation techniques that zap stress fast. She had a little insert. One of the techniques, techniques is meditating. It says, you can see it there, a few moments or minutes of practice per day can help ease anxiety. Research suggests that daily meditation may alter the brain's neural pathways, making you more resilient to stress. We all need a quiet place. A place where the doors are closed, and you don't have to worry about what's going on on the outside. Even if you gotta get back in the game, it's good to have somewhere where you can go and close the door and know that you've got a good shepherd, a provider, a protector who's going to help you get through. The word of God for us sheep. The word of God made flesh. Jesus is that door for us that provides not only the way to the Father, but protection from the storms of life. Remember the flood? So we got young people in here today who are in Sunday school. So this is for them. Somebody was told to build a flood, to build an ark, not a flood, to build an ark. So who was told that young people that were in Sunday school told, there we go across the Noah, right? Noah was told to build the ark. And, and, and the Bible says that, that he built the ark, and what did he do with the ark? What happened with it, on that ark? All kinds of two, two, two by two animals went in there, right? And Noah's family, they filled up the ark. They did what God told them to do. And then, what happened? What happened? They survived the storm. But what enabled them to survive the storm? The ark enabled them to survive the storm. It rained. But before it rained, and, they, and for them to survive the storm, there was one more thing that had to happen. Remember what happened? What happened? Anybody? Remember what happened? Well, well, so I heard somebody say, close the, door. close the door. God closed the door. He closed the door so that they would be protected and they could survive. God provided protection for his people. Jesus is the door of our protection. He's our protection from the penalty of our sin. He died on Calvary's cross to pay the price way back on Calvary. He died and he rose again. And those who believe in him, though they die, yet shall they live. We are protected. Jesus is the door of our protection from the worries of this world because he is also the good shepherd who promises that goodness and mercy shall pursue us, shall follow us, shall chase after us, shall surround us all the days of our life. And when this life is over, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord, not for a minute, but for an eternity. He is our protection. Today we give thanks to God that the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we are the sheep of his master. He leads us. He protects us. He claims us, and not only us, but many others whom he reaches through the work that he enables you and me to do. So to God be the glory for the great things that he has done among us and that he is doing through us. He is our good shepherd, and he is the door for our protection. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.